analysis and basketball analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here with him. All right, it's time for the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman tag. We're along for the ride to the pod. Bob's on assignment. Happy Super Bowl to all those celebrate with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some bets. So go to FanDuel.com right now. Okay, let's get to the Celtics. An embarrassing, an embarrassing loss to the Lakers, Jeff. Are you pissed off? I mean, I I, I got to say, I really don't care. I, I know it sounds probably crazy. You're expecting me to rant and rave about this one. And, you know, all I'll say is, like, if you're prepared to play a team with LeBron and, and Anthony Davis and then neither one of them show up, yeah, you're not going to be as motivated. Should you have beaten him by 40 without – those two and with Reeves being their best player, absolutely. I, I'm just not worried. I mean, you look at their overall record, it's human nature, right? Like you don't – you're not going to win every game, number one, in the NBA. There's there's too many. Uh, number two, you know, again, I don't think they're going to be playing any of these type of teams in the playoffs. They're going to be up for the playoffs, no matter who they go up against in the first round. And I think that's part of the – what's tough for this team, Gary, is they know, and I talked to Tatum about it before the year, like they understand they're going to be judged on what? The playoffs. And that's it. They could have won every regular season game. It doesn't matter. Now, they've got to get better, and I think they have for the most part this season, right? Like figure out how to play with one another. They've done all that. but. Again, I think this was one of those letdown games, whatever you want to call it, that human nature just jumps in and it's like, all right, like, yeah, we're going to go through the motions and, and probably win this one. All right, let's talk about some warning signs. Now, from the three, and one of the problems I have with this team is I understand they want to win with the three, but in last night's game, and this is this, this was an aberration. But L.A. shot 52% from three because the Celtics didn't want to play any defense. Yeah. And the Celtics shot 33.3% from three. So but so they didn't play defense last night, which goes to your point about they let up. They said, okay, the big guys aren't playing. We're going to win this, no problem. And it was a learning lesson. The yeah, I mean, shot again. The, go ahead. You're, 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 you're allowing this Lakers team to score 114 points. Obviously, you're not playing defense. Um, against a bunch of guys that, I mean, look at it. I mean, this team, D'Angelo Russell, Reeves, you know, Prince, I mean, Vanderbilt. Like, it's just, it's a it's a team full of, like, a lot of fringe NBA players. That's why LeBron's oh, complaining mean, about yeah. this team. Yeah, I mean, Reeves why, had 32 points. It's crazy. Right, right. They're just, you know, I, again, I, I, I'm just not overly concerned right. about this. At all. At okay. all. Okay. Well, let's talk about the three point shooting because what I'm concerned with, and it's it, it could happen in the playoffs, is when the three's not falling, their lack of willingness to go to the basket because they can go to the basket. How yeah. does Missoula get that point through? Well, I think if you're making them, it's fine. And the beauty of, of the NBA is it's not like the NCAA tournament, it's not a one and done. Like if you're, if you're doing that in the NCAA tournament, and you don't make shots, and you're not guarding at a good level, you're done. You're out. In the NBA, it's it's still a series where if you're the better team, generally you might have a night like that or two, and you got to be able to win with defense. And I think this team can win with defense. That's kind of the beauty with, with them, right? Like Jalen Brown's playing better defense this year than he has in the last couple of years. You know Drew Holiday and Derek White can really guard. Tatum has taken it upon himself to be better defensively. And Porzingis is much better than he, he's ever been in his career on that end of the court. So I, I just, I feel like, again, this team has everything. But, yes, you're right. Like, Missoula, on a night when you're not making, like, you've got to understand that and then kind of change what you're doing a little bit rather than keep taking them. Because there are those nights when you're going to go, you know, again, three for 30 from three. Instead of going three for 30, Make a three for 20 and then get to the basket because you've got plenty of guys 
that can score, you know, both in transition, in the half court, around the basket, get the ball to Porzingis, have Tatum be a guy who can, depending on his matchup, he, he could certainly post up guys. I agree with you on the defense. It's going to be there in the playoffs. We see it with every NBA team. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not the issue. My concern is with the three-point shot. And I, I think they'll learn their lesson. And, and it's not like they can't get to the basket. They can. You know, or they can use Porzingis in a post-up right. role. So hopefully we'll see that in the postseason because we all know when you're pressing and you're trying to make the three, the more you miss, the more you're pressing, you start going to the basket, you make some easy layups, then you kick it out to somebody and they're not even thinking about it and they, they knock one down. Yeah. So the defense, I agree. The defense is going to be there. I agree. I just hope they, <clears throat> on the bad night, bad night when the three's not falling, they go to the two game a little bit sooner than they have. And that's, that's down in Missoula. Now, here's another thing I'll point out. Jalen Brown, all-star reserve, good for him. Yep. Against the Lakers, he was four for 12 with eight points. Against the Clippers, he was three for 13 with eight points. Against the Nuggets, Tatum had a bad game against the Nuggets too. He was six of 19 for 13 points. What's going on there? Am I am I nitpicking? Yeah, I think you're nitpicking. I, I think Jalen Brown's been much better this year. You know why? His defense has been back, and he's actually passing the basketball. So I'm less concerned about his scoring, Gary, than I ever have been. I'm less concerned about his shooting than I ever have been because they've got other guys that can do that, that you can rely on, right? Like, if he's having an off game, you know Tatum – Porzingis, Derek White can make, you know, his presence felt offensively now. <clears throat> and Drew Holiday's capable, although that's that's not really his role with this team, but he can if he needs to. And then, you know, Hauser off the bench has proven to be a weapon. Um, so, I, yeah, I just, I feel like the beauty of this team is in its, its balance and – Depth is probably the wrong word because they're not deep, deep off the bench. But what they are is deep among their starting five, six, if you want to say Horford. Uh, and then Hauser's fine at seven with this group. Actually, Sam Hauser's great because, again, they he makes shots. They can't really, you know, guard him like they want to guard him because there's too many other weapons around him. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel. America's number one sportsbook. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets. Which players will score a touchdown? How many points will be scored? And so much more. New customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Boston to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. How do you think Missoula handled the post-game situation last night? He was like, look, no big deal, kind of laughed it off. He had your attitude, as a matter of yeah. fact. Yeah, I was surprised for Joe. Like, that's not what I expected from him, because he's so all business that I thought he would have taken a little bit harder. But I, I think he understands in the big picture. You're not going to get a, too upset about the little things right now, because they have played the way he's wanted them to. Right. They have really, you know, done everything that that we asked them and he's asked them to do this season. So, you know, again, it's 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 about the process. It's a long year. And I think it's it's impossible not to have slip ups like that during the season. It is impossible. You know, they've got to conserve some energy, too. And I think that's kind of what they were doing last night is pacing themselves to some degree. OK. Load management sucks. It just yeah. sucks. And now it's real, you know, it's the Lakers, it's the Garden. And I guess they, you know, they wanted to play against the Knicks. Okay, I'm sorry, LeBron and AD. Why can't you play against both teams? I mean, I and I don't have a solution. They were talking last night, and we're gonna get to some thoughts from Kenny Charles and Shaq and Ernie. They were talking about this on TNT last night about you know, if you play in 65 games or less yeah. you're no longer eligible for the all-star game right. Shaq's point was what what if you're legitimately hurt exactly I mean, and it's a good point but it's a it stinks man I mean 
you know, yeah. say you laid out the money. Wash Gary Washburn mentioned it in the Globe. Say you're sitting in the 300 section. You've laid out, you know, you've you've budgeted to see this game, and yeah. you're watching AD and LeBron on the bench. I, it's terrible. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, again, you pay all this money, and for your kid, you know, to see LeBron. It's it's the last time yeah. you think you're going to see LeBron, and and you fork out all this money, but. Listen, these days, you know what you're doing. You you uh, know what you're doing, and right, that's the right. hard part of it. You know these guys aren't playing. You know, I, I you got to figure with this this one. It was almost like, hey, we're not winning this game anyway. So let's let's sit these guys and make sure they're healthy for games that are winnable. Which are at New York, you know, at Charlotte. Is New York then, winnable I'll, now? We'll get to them in a minute. I don't know if it is winnable, but I don't know. But certainly, they feel like uh, that's a whole lot more winnable than in Boston. And and you know, again, there might have been some legitimate. Listen, I'm not questioning LeBron and his health. That dude has has played enough games over his career. You know what? What is he? Thirty nine? He turned forty? I can't even remember. Thirty nine, I think. Um, I'm not questioning him. I mean, Anthony Davis, you always – you don't question whether he's hurt, but he's just hurt a lot, a lot. So, um, yeah, I, again, this Lakers team, it's going to be interesting. I mean, there's only a few more days before the trade deadline. Do they do something big? And I don't know what big well, means. Can they, though, with the salary cap restrictions? I don't know what I'd do. I mean, do you blow it up is, I guess, what I'm saying, if you're Rob Palenka. To just blow this shit up and uh you mean Trey trade LeBron points. or Anthony Davis? I mean, where are you going with them right now? Yeah, I where know. I know, I know, I know. You know, like like you I don't know, to, to try to get something for him at this point. Get get as many picks as you can and start over ish. And and again, you know you can Lakers are always gonna get something in free agency because they're the Lakers, but what they're missing is any sort of plan for the future now. Like LeBron's going to go here in the next year or two. Right. And then what, you're going to be shitty anyway. Yeah, you're right. Tough, tough, tough move to make. Yeah. You have to do something. Okay. Um, my second favorite podcast is Smartless. Uh, yeah. to this one. I don't know if you've listened to it at all, but it's fantastic. I, I've been told I need to listen oh, to it. It's great. I, I, they went on a tour, okay, and they did a special. I think it was on was it Netflix or HBO? I can't remember one or the other. And they did live shows. Yep. And Bruce Springsteen went on Broadway and did a live show, of talking about their lives. Yep. My suggestion is, is that the TNT crew needs to go on Broadway, <laughs> and do a live show. I'm not kidding. And just like, because if you listen to Smart Looks, like you'll understand it. It's just put, you know, those four guys in seats on a stage, do questions and answers, talk Gosh. about their lives, talk about everything they've experienced. Yeah. They are so entertaining. And when the Celtics are on TNT, I'm constant. I'm reminded how great they are. Awesome. I mean, I could listen to that show all the time. I mean, again, it's, it's the best studio show by far on tv and i think it's again what are we told like inform and entertain right, right. inform and entertain in whatever order it might be entertain and inform these days um it's but they though. do both they do both and they have no filter doing it and i think right. that's the beauty of it is we know like they've done so much in their lives and where everybody else is worried what they say in this day and age, right? Like on TV. Yeah. And, and we need to be. Those guys aren't, especially again, you know, Shaq and, and Chuck. And I know Chuck not well, well, but I know him fairly well. And the dude is like the best guy you'll ever meet. Out there. Fantastic. Like, the Fantastic. best. Like literally, He's you know, I, like I said, I don't know him well. I'll walk in to the arena at the Final Four, even, even, couple of years ago i'm walking down the street in i think it was atlanta maybe i walk i'm walking down the street and all of a sudden somebody sticks their head out a limo and yells hey goodman and it's chuck like literally like he just 
he's got a way about him that he can he can say how he feels and and hammer people and well, still yeah. be well liked for the most part. Which well, he is does very a great talk show with Gail King too. Yeah. I mean, it's fantastic. It's a great show. Uh, I just, you know, I remember Barkley. I remember Shaq. I think Kobe did this as well. When Red died. And they saw Tommy when they, they were at the garden for whatever reason. And they all went up to Tommy and they offered their condolences. You know, they had so much respect for the league and so forth. Uh, so let me let me throw a couple of things out there it, it, that they said about this game. Okay. Shaq said champions stay focused, and they blow teams out by forty. Then Chuck said, "I wonder if the Celtics are mentally tough." But here is a really good put, really good point by Chuck. I thought um, he said, "You know, Minnesota beat Dallas without Kyrie and Luca by forty. Because Chuck was like saying, I don't know about Minnesota. And me too. I've always been kind of like, well, are the T Wolves for real? So I'll just let you respond to those points because I thought those were really good takes. They're good takes, but all I'll say is like Minnesota's accomplished nothing. They haven't done anything yet. Zero. Okay. Like the Celtics are still to me playing for the playoffs. And that's that's difficult to process, right? Like again, Tatum said that to me before the season. Like we 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 need to not fast forward to the playoffs. We need to to get better every game, every practice. Right. It's easier said than done. There's going to be some slip ups, but you know that's the key for this team, right? Is like everybody knows they're going to be judged by what they do in the postseason because they've fallen short over the years. So it's harder for them to get up than Minnesota that's still trying to prove people wrong, even that they're the best team in the you know, in, in the West or one of the best teams in the West, it's different. They're just at different spaces. All I'll say to those guys is like, really, you're going to trust Minnesota over the Celtics when it comes to the playoffs because they beat a crappy team by 40 and the Celtics didn't. I'm not going there. It's also interesting when you listen to these three um, in the whole, like, I don't remember them sitting out of a lot of games. You know, so no, they nobody look, did. They nope, must look at these did. guys and go, "What?" <laughs> they played. They played hurt. That's the difference. They, they played hurt. Twenty, thirty years ago, you played hurt. Now you're playing. A lot of times, a lot of guys are playing to protect a contract. That's what they're doing. They're protecting themselves, which I think that's just gotten to be the case. That's why I love Tatum. Tatum plays most games. I mean, look at the percentage of games he's right. Tatum plays. It's it's about as high as any all-star out there. Now, again, that may not be the case when he gets older, but for right now, he doesn't take a lot of, of days off. All right, can we – are we getting to all-star snubs? Well, I want, I want to get to the Knicks that, and the, the all-star. All right. I just need – Knicks have won yep. nine straight. They're 32-17. and 17. Yeah. Brunson with 40 points. They beat Indiana. And Brunson gets on the All Star team. I just know you're a fan of his. Yeah, I think that you've been a proponent of his. What Bob was a little suspicious. I'll just let you have your victory parade there. Well, both of us. I think both of us have been behind. Yeah, maybe Bob early was on. A, was, Bob was a little suspect. Well, we were both suspect to whether he could be a guy, the guy, on a championship contending team. And I'm still not sold of that yet. And and it's not. So much about Jalen, it's almost kind of like his running mate, Julius Randle, who's an all-star and has played great this year. And he's hurt. He's out for two to three weeks now. Yeah, yeah I just don't know if Randle can be trusted at that level yet in the postseason. But, listen, Jalen Brunson's been the ultimate winner. I mean, won two national titles in, in college at Villanova. It's all about the right things. That's what I will say with Jalen Brunson. you got to root for that kid. You're, I root for that kid. He's awesome. Like, he's awesome. And the fun part about Jalen Brunson is, like, at Villanova, they're almost, like, told to be robots by Jay Wright when Jay Wright was there. And I remember asking Jalen this question a couple of years ago. I'm like, dude, you, you guys all have personalities. I saw it behind closed doors. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we all did. But, like, it was just the Villanova way. We couldn't show it. We just couldn't show our personalities. 
you know, Jalen's very, you know, again, like he's not, he's very mature. He's very mature. And you're seeing that with, he was the right guy for the Knicks because Jalen Brunson could also handle criticism. He's not going to lash back when things are going poorly by the New York media or anything like that. And there's nothing for him to lash back for right now because they're playing well. But if they lose even in the first round of the playoffs, let's say, and the New York media hammers him, Jalen Brunson's going to be able to take it. He, he's not mentally tough, Gary. He's perfect for New York. I agree. I mean, I just root for the guy. Okay, all-star snubs. Um, <clears throat> boy, it's hard. It's hard, Jeff. There's a lot of talent. We all know who the starters are. Uh, and, they, and of course, Randall is, probably, is not going to play. So they'll need a replacement there. So what are your thoughts on the reserves? I'm going to say there's one guy overall that I feel like should have been in, the, in and I've got to do this for Bob Ryan as well, stick up for uh, DeMontis Sabonis. Oh, right, uh, right, 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 right. He's been unbelievable. Sacramento didn't get any representation. Darren Fox didn't make it either, but I would have went Sabonis over even Fox. He's averaging 20 points, 13 rebounds, eight assists. I mean, those are insane numbers, insane numbers, and it's not like – Sacramento hasn't been good. I think they're fourth or fifth in the in the league right now. Domus has been a guy that he again, I would have put him on there over Carl Anthony Towns. Okay. That's that's okay. the that's you know, because it's always easy to say, oh, he got snubbed, he got snubbed, he got snubbed. yeah, but who are you taking off? Right. Well, that's my off? question. Yeah. Right. I would have taken Towns off and put and I know again, Towns is with Minnesota, but Anthony Edwards has been clearly their best player. He's in the right. in the All Star game. I would have put Sabonis on there in place of of Cat. Who takes Randall's spot? It's funny. There'll be a lot of people who say Trey Young. His numbers are great, but the difference is they're seven games under five hundred. Right. Like I feel like Trey Young again. You got to be five hundred here. Like with with that team, if you're and he is. Arguably the worst defensive player in the league. I mean, he, he's bottom five of anybody who plays a lot of minutes. So, like, as good as he is offensively, he gives up so much defensively uh, that I'm not sure I put Trey Young on there, but I think he'll he'll get in there for Randall. Does White have a chance? I think Porzingis gets in over White, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, Jeff- I think Porzingis, yeah. Uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tang, going along for the Ride Zoom and Pod. Brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Super Bowl Sunday. It's all about scoring the best seats on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing your super bets. All right, Jeff, until next week, bud. You got it. We'll talk soon. Bye.